फाइव सेकेंड्स टू गो स्टार्ट द हाई कोर्ट इन क्रिमिनल रिविजन अगेंस्ट कन्विक्शन इज नोट पोस्ट टू एक्सरसाइज द जूरिस्डिक्शन अलाइक टू द अपीलेट कोर्ट एंड द स्कोप ऑफ इंटरफेरेंस इन रिविजन इज एक्सट्रीमली नैरो सेक्शन थ्री नाइन्टी सेवन ऑफ क्रिमिनल प्रोसीजर कोड वेस्ट जूरिस्डिक्शन फॉर द पर्पज ऑफ सेटिस्फाइंग इट सेल्फ और हिम सेल्फ एज टू द करेक्टनेस लीगैलिटी और प्रोपराइटी ऑफ एनी फाइंडिंग सेंटेंस और ऑर्डर रिकॉर्डिड और पास एंड एज टू द रेगुलरिटी ऑफ एनी प्रोसीडिंग्स ऑफ सच इन्फीरियर कोर्ट द ऑब्जेक्ट ऑफ द प्रोविजन इज टू सेट राइट ए पेटेंट डिफेक्ट और एन एरर ऑफ जूरिस्डिक्शन और लो देयर हैज टू बी वेल फाउंडेड एरर विच इज टू बी डेटरमाइंड ऑन द मेरिट्स ऑफ इंडिविजुअल केस इट इज ऑल्सो वेल सेटल्ड दैट while considering the same the revisional court does not dwell at length upon the facts and evidence of the case to reverse those findings this court in the case of manju ram versus state of assam 2009 13 scc 330 while dealing with the scope of re appreciation of evidence by higher court in criminal revision observed in paragraphs 9 10 and 11 of the judgment as under so far as issue 1 is concerned that is as to whether the appellant got married with shrimati ranju sharma is a pure question of fact all the three courts below have given concurrent finding regarding the factum of marriage and its validity it has been held to be a valid marriage it is a settled legal proposition that if the courts below have recorded the finding of fact the question of re appreciation of evidence by the third court does not arise unless it is found to be totally perverse the higher court does not sit as a regular court of appeal its function is to ensure that law is being properly administered such a court cannot embark upon fruitless task of determining the issues by re appreciating the evidence this court would not ordinarily interfere with the concurrent findings on pure questions of fact and review the evidence again unless there are exceptional circumstances justifying the departure from the normal practice the position may undoubtedly be different if the inference is one of law from the facts admitted and proved or where the finding of fact is materially affected by violation of any rule of law or procedure thus it is evident from the above that this court being the fourth court should not interfere with the exercise of discretion by the courts below as the said courts have exercised their discretion in good faith giving due weight to relevant material and without being swayed by any irrelevant material even if two views are possible on the question of fact we being the fourth court should not interfere even though we may exercise discretion differently had the case come before us initially in view of the above we are not inclined to interfere with the finding of fact so far as the issue of bigamy is concerned nor the quantum of punishment on this count is required to be interfered with as per the settled legal position and after conviction by the trial court and the appellate court on filing the revision the high court maintained the conviction upholding the findings of the two courts stop